cervical cancer has denied the loving bubbly Yafofie hair joy and has raised a giant barrier between her and her friends. She's unable to mingle with anyone outside her nuclear family for a reason best explained by Dr. Seibonsu. Sometimes they have such an offensive discharge. But why that? Well, it's a growth. And what happens is sometimes the growth outstrips the supply, the blood supply. So it's like it's growing faster than the blood supply developing the supply. So with time, some of the tissue will die off. And then they have to be shared away. And that is quite as offensive. Mm. Okay, so it's all to do with the pathology of the disease. If you're not getting food to eat, you die. If you die, we don't bury you. You start to smell. Mm -hmm. So because cancer cells grow very fast, okay, they get their nutrients from the blood vessels. So if new vessel doesn't develop in the area, then the tissue that grow around that area will die off. They'll be sloughed off and they'll come out in the form of discharge. And that is very offensive. If you have a family of four, five, who shares a room, mm -hmm. And then somebody has set an offensive discharge. You look at our waiting area, you can accommodate about 100 people. But if a patient who has an offensive discharge, one of them is sitting there, you cannot. The whole place is offensive. Okay? So it does affect their social life because they cannot, you know, be in gatherings. It's very difficult for them to share rooms with their spouses. At this stage, the patient is not the only person who bears the burden. They are close families too and it is important they are assisted psychologically, spiritually and physically to go through it. Family health physicians are needed at this stage to offer this pain relief service needed by the patient and her family. One of such physicians needed is Dr. Edwina Adwapari Loko. Our aim in palliative care is to try and, if we can't take away the disease, can we improve the quality of life somewhat? Can we manage the symptoms? Can we help with the psychological problems? Can we help with your spiritual well-being? Um, can we coach the family on how to look after the patient and how to look after themselves so that even though this illness is progressive or this illness is caused a lot of problems, you are able to overcome it and have a better quality of life. That's what we are about. So that's a picture of the service. Among the many cervical cancer patients I interacted with, one theme ran through. All of them assumed the unusual bleeding was a menopausal sign. Even those who had long passed that stage still felt same. This 70-year-old woman, Abne Friye, is one of them. I was told even after menopause, at times you could still bleed. I attended a funeral in my village and there I saw blood. Because it came with no pain, I assumed it was normal. The bleeding could continue for four days and stop and would start again in six months. After some time, the bleeding resumed and it continued for a year. And just when she thought that era was almost over, a different, extremely worrying chapter opened. Hey, hey where is this sickness coming from? I'm exhausted. When the bleeding was gradually stopping after a year, I suddenly started experiencing this offensive discharge. It is very offensive, and I simply don't know what is it. For two years now, that discharge has not stopped. Now, I walk with pampers in my bag. I change myself three times before daybreak. During the day too, I change myself three times before I go to bed. This huge pack finishes in less than two weeks. I've been here at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital a number of times, yet the flow has not stopped. What an uncomfortable and dehumanizing situation this old woman finds herself. Her quality of life is fast worsening, yet often patients like her and many others are not assisted early enough to live a dignified life. That's according to Dr. Edwin Pariloko. 
most people think palliative care means end of life care. So there's always a delay in referral. So we tend to see our patients when my colleagues have reached their wit's end. So um, it's like, okay, they've, and at this point in time, there's nothing more uh, we can do curatively for the patient. We have done everything. So now it's symptomatic care. That's not, that's not the ideal thing. We should be working hand in hand so we can have some of these difficult conversations early. Because you want to look at what is the patient's ultimate goal of care when it comes to this illness. Cervical cancer kills mm. more. Why? Because cervical cancer is more deadly and, and they, it's not easy to find. Most of the time, by the time you find symptoms, it's late. Mm. For breasts, it's easy because a woman can examine her breast herself. If there's a lump, they can pick it. But for the cervix, it may go on for a long time with no sign. And by the time they start showing signs, the disease may have spread. So, so that's, the, that's the danger with cervical cancer. And you need a health person to do an examination to find if there's anything wrong. You can't, you, 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 you can do that, you can't do uh, self-examination with cervical cancer, but you can do self-examination with, with breast cancer. It appears Abinefri's condition has reached a stage only pain relief and treatment can be offered to reduce her pains. She cannot be cured. Per this explanation by a gynecologist, Dr. Edua Piakubi. The stats tells us that um, in, in um, Ghana, the tertiary hospitals, about 70% of the cases will come in in late state where you cannot do anything. So when they come in early, you can, you can do something about it. When the disease advances, that's where you start bringing the symptoms. But when it is in the um, pre-malignant state, you don't feel anything. You don't see anything. So when it is advanced, that is where you start, um, the patient will come in bleeding, especially when after intercourse or when you put your hand there and it touches the, the lesion there, then you start bleeding. And then the, at the late stage, you start having um, uh, uh, very offensive vaginal discharges, low abdominal pain and all that. And when they reach the advanced stage, it's not reversible. What we do at the advanced stage is to try to minimize the progression of the disease. And then we do that by giving um, um, chemo, chemo radiation, chemo, chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Uh, that's what, at very advanced stage, that's what we, we can do for the woman. At this stage, that beckons with outstretched hand and whispers softly of an unknown land. It is so frustrating and painful. <laughs> It is in my uterus and worrying me. I feel excruciating pains in my thighs and abdomen. It's like bites from insects. It's really unbearable. Sadly, Yafofie and Abnefriye are not even aware their conditions are so bad and medically cannot recover. So Yafofie, for example, is so hopeful she will be healed soon to pursue her dream of traveling abroad one day. I really want to travel abroad. My soul yearns for that. I want to either visit Germany or Italy. Any of the two will be fine. I am told there is money there. <laughs> for family health physicians, this is not a mere wish. It is a signal the patient's journey to eternity has begun. Some people know that they are going. Some, uh, and sometimes they begin to make statements. When you look back, you realize that um, they were actually telling you that, telling you goodbye at that time. But you didn't think about it that way. Sometimes they may be still and quiet for days. And then one day they, they just get up and start saying, uh, start talking, do this. It's like they've got a new burst of energy. This, this, I want to see this, I want to talk to this person, I want to do this, I want to do that. And they can go on for a few days and then suddenly they start going down again and then death comes. Remember what Yaa said? She said her soul was yearning to travel abroad. Truly, weeks after, her soul traveled but to an unknown destination.
Sebeko Kansa has killed her. All she needed to stay alive was an early screening to detect the disease. It is a simple procedure as demonstrated by a senior principal nursing officer at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, Doris J. For me not to hurt the woman, I just pat the lips of the vaginal walls here, the labia majora and minora to have access to the vagina. Then I pass my speculum, go in gently, and then visualize the cervix and screw it into position so it doesn't fall off. Now I pick the instrument called the spongeable deforceps to be able to hold my my cotton wool. and then soak in the vinegar or acetic acid. So I go in to the vagina, to the cervix, and then wash it and then come out and drop my used cotton wool. So there's a timer. Now I have to time this. for one minute. So I tell the woman that we are waiting for one minute to get the result. And then I start my timer. So we are waiting for one minute. After one minute, I go back to look at the cervix if there's any abnormality. The, if there's any abnormality, you can see a patch, what we call a patch, or a lesion, or something that uh, for me, it cannot be wiped off, so it's like a patch there or a sore. That's how I can explain it. So when you look at it yeah. and there's any patch, you go in. Whether there's a patch or not, the excess vinegar or acetic acid that was applied will be dabbed. So I dab it gently and then come out. And then I tell the woman the results, whether it is negative or positive. If it is negative, it means there is no patch and we leave her to go home. But if there is a patch, then that is where we are going to do cryotherapy, which is the treatment for the precancerous lesion or precancerous cells that are formed there. So the other type is pap smear. And that one, we have a special kit that we take the cells from the cervix onto. So the same way we pass our speculum, and then we have the kit containing um, a spatula with two ends, a grooved end and then a sharp end. Then we have one with a brush. And then there's a pack with a slide. And you see it's with a V, C, and E. The V says the vaginal walls, C says the cervix, and then E is endocervix, that is inside the cervix. Then a fixative to fix the or to, to retain the cells that you've picked onto the slide. And then there's a spatula and then a brush. This brush goes into the cervix. And then the spatula goes around the um, vaginal walls, that's a sharp end. And then the grooved end sits on the cervix and then picks what is on the endocervix or at the side there. Now, the sharp end of the spatula goes to the vaginal walls and then I scrape or clean this place to get some cells at the walls here. Turn it and then use the grooved end, apply it or put it on the cervix, the egg outside of the cervix, turn it at 360 degrees and then come out the way. Now the brush also goes into the cervix and then I turn it at 360 degrees, making sure I press it against the walls. With each part that I took, the vagina walls will go to the V and thinly spread it at the area where the V is. Turn it and then go to where the C is, that is the cervix or the neck of the womb. Also spread it thinly where the C is. Now I pick the brush side and then the brush goes to where the endo or the E is, where I took the endocervical smear. Then I smear it or spread it over that area. And quickly, I pour my fixative on it so it doesn't dry. And that retains the cells on the slide for pickup. Because it will be taken to the laboratory histopathology to be read. Then I come to the woman 
and removed my speculum gently. And drop it into the news, however, of the passing of some patients like here immediately cause fear among other patients like Abner Freer who are not sure exactly what they might have done in the past to warrant this affliction. I simply don't know what might have triggered it because I don't engage in all the risk factors. Before I married, I had seen only one man in my life. I had six children with my husband, but married again when he died. My current husband abandoned me when the cancer started. If you were in his shoes, would you have stayed? Would you agree to stay with me, knowing very well you cannot have sex with me? It's been five years now since he left me. He has gone to marry again. My children told me not to worry. For five years now, I've not had sex. It's been found to be higher among people who have multiple sexual partners, for example. Somebody who's had sex with one partner cannot have it because that partner may have had multiple sexual partners, so the person could also still transmit the infection. The survival rate for cervical cancer is very low. Um, when you get it in late stage, um, it's, about, it's less than 50%. But when you get it in the early stages, um, when it is in the pre-malignant stage, it's almost 100%. But when it is very early, like um, in stage one, or stage, yes, yeah, stage one, around stage one, is about 80 to 90% um, survival rate. Perhaps, Ya would have been alive today if she had reported early when some of the symptoms started manifesting. If you experience something, you shouldn't, I mean, stay long before you report. You have to report it earlier, mm. like what I did. Because when we went, you know, I saw some people, even doctor became annoyed with them that when you came, you know, I told you to come uh, to the clinic uh, this time, but you didn't come. One year you are now coming. And even the person is very, very offensive, smelling, doctor can understand it. The doctors told them that if you come here, we give you time. You go to the, uh, I mean, the pastors, if the thing got worse, then you come to us. I mean, when I saw it, I just reported to my daughter because I don't know the after effect. The after effect could be humiliating and it comes with some excruciating pains which make victims conclude it cannot be a medical condition. <laughs> Prior to the bleeding and discharge, I had a dream that someone had taken something from my vagina and the person was daring me to come for it. So when the bleeding started, I was convinced it had to do with the dream. I personally don't believe it is cancer as the doctors claim. You have to intensify your prayers when hit with this disease. I am sure it's a spiritual thing since the doctors are unable to help me out. If I get to know somebody who is having the same problem but going out with the pastors and so forth, I will advise the person that my friend, what you are doing, you are just wasting your time. So the screening basically for the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Ghana, this confirms the need for intensified education on cervical cancer, as emphasized by its general secretary, Dr. Pramis Safogan. Yes, that national attention as a matter of a grave concern has not been there, which is why we are very happy multimedia is on this uh, project. It is so much totally in place. The point is that the women need to know. Knowledge is key. They need to know that this is such a condition. In so many years ago, we used to see it in the later years. But now, women, even in their mid-30s, come down with advanced cervical cancer and rather terminal. 
you know, they can't be so advanced. It's spread to the lungs, the kidneys, and then you just give them palliative care and you lose them. Women in reproductive, economically viable age group, we're losing them. In fact, cervical cancer, you hear it everywhere. You hear it, but it's not heard as much as we've heard about breast cancer. For this reason, I think this documentary will go and emphasize them or re-emphasize the point that our women are suffering. And most of the time, because the service is hidden somewhere, most people don't know that this patient even has that as compared to the one who has a breast cancer. So it, is, it will go in a long way in making sure that our people are aware of this disease. The people are also aware of the fact that there is a stage before the cancer. And that stage is what we want, even if the person has it. That stage is where we want to catch them so that they don't develop the cancer. The truth is, it is a medical condition which ought not to kill anyone because its triggers are tameable. That's according to the head of non-communicable diseases at the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Dennis Laie. There are vaccines to prevent people from getting the infection because it's the infection that would generate a cascade of events which would eventually result in a cancer. So once you stop or you, you get a person vaccinated, then the person is immune or is protected against this virus. So even if they come into contact with the virus, they don't get infected. And in that case, they cannot go on to develop cervical cancer. The vaccine is quite expensive. So currently it's not available for free like we have for the other childhood vaccines, which means that people must buy. And as I said, people don't even know that this vaccine exists and it's commercially available in a few places. It's not very available. So that also means that access is an issue, okay? And then, of course, I mentioned the cost. There are, however, some low-hanging fruits the nation can take advantage of, as proposed by Dr. Samuel Nchuopong, consultant obstetrician gynecologist at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. These cervical cancer prevention services, my argument is that, can easily be integrated into the antenatal and postnatal services as well as into the child welfare clinics. Mm -hmm. So during those uh, periods, when we know our women attend hospitals, we can also offer them these services. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we'll be protecting the women not only during the period of pregnancy and childbearing, mm -hmm. but then also the periods beyond. Mm -hmm. Because there's no point in a woman completing childbearing at 40, 45 and by the next 5-10 years, comes down with cervical cancer at a stage that it has become incurable. When we had a good opportunity to prevent that condition, maybe the 5 or 10 years earlier. No life of any woman should be cut short due to cervical cancer because it is a highly preventable disease. It is a public health issue due to its high mortality and morbidity rate. The campaign is on for it to be given the same or even more attention as the other cancers. On her sick bed at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, this 45-year-old mother of one, Dr. Sedem, a cervical cancer patient, prays to God to heal her so she could champion the campaign. She was treated of the disease two years ago, but there was a relapse and the cancer has spread to the other organs. If God healed me, I'll go to a TV or a radio station. I forget myself. I say to the world that cervical so cancer is a secret killer. It can kill you. It can destroy you and destroy your family. So it's been something which is been hurt. So it's like God has listened to, to your prayer. Because I have a daughter, I have a younger sister, I have a whole female in my family. So I don't know what's happening to somebody now. 
I've come out with my, I don't know this. So it's something which I said to myself, I'll do it. Even if it's a disgrace, I'll do it. Perhaps this advice from Dr. Promise Sefoka is worth heeding. So the woman abstain, stay with one partner, protected sex, regular screening. And anytime you see any abnormal vaginal discharge, either it is copious or persistent or very unpleasant in order, it's not up to you to determine, oh, this could be cancer, this could not come to the hospital. We do a check. If it is not, fair enough. If it is, it will probably be early that we can deal with it. Rather than wait till it come to us when it is too late that we can only support you in palliation and as you pass on. 1,500 women in their productive years dying every year in Ghana due to cervical cancer should be of concern to everyone, especially policymakers in the country. This condition requires some drastic measures to manage. The nation needs to take the necessary steps to save the next batch of almost 1,500 women whose lives are on the line this year and the years to come. My name is Seth Kwame Boatin, and I join in the campaign to say no to cervical cancer. It can be a silent killer. End cervical cancer now. Get screened. Every year, 1,500 women die in Ghana from cervical cancer. Our mothers, our sisters, our daughters. We can't afford to lose any one of them. End cervical cancer now. Cervical cancer is deadly. End cervical cancer now. Get screened. End cervical cancer now get screened. Cervical cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths amongst women. You don't want to be a statistic. Get tested now. It is increasingly becoming the most threatened part of the female genitalia. End cervical cancer now. Get screened. End cervical cancer.